Inside this box is one of the coolest sets that LEGO's ever made. Usually, LEGO motors are powered by batteries. But this literally generates its own electricity. Yeah, that means no batteries, no wall outlets, just the set. Not many people have even seen this set before or even know about it, so I'm gonna show you just how cool it really is. Let's do this. So this set actually came out back in 2010, so it's fairly old, and that also makes it super expensive. This set usually goes for 150 to 200, but I found a super good deal on this and it was only $100. And the set might not look like a $100 set, but I'll show you exactly why that's worth it. Yo. Oh, it looks like a 2010 set. Yo. So here it is. Man, I can't believe I have this. Gosh, that was loud. So this is Lego set 9688 and it's called, it doesn't actually have a name, wow. But you can see that it only comes with 12 pieces. And yeah, that's not very many, but all the pieces are super cool. Now this box is pretty beat up. So the seller told me that they opened the box just to verify if everything was there. And they said it was. So everything's new, just the seller previously opened the box. All right, yo, why are there so many instruction manuals? Yo, there's four? It doesn't even come with these pieces. Oh no, 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 there's five. <laughs> That box is uh, seen better days. <laughs> what is this? Huh? Oh, okay, this will make more sense. So these manuals are to combine it with another set. I was really confused. I'm like, these pieces do not come in the set, obviously. So you can see on the back of the box that this set, plus this other education set, you can make all of these things. So of course, I don't have that other education set, but I can guarantee you I have like all of these parts. So we can make some of this stuff. And it also says to combine it with Lego Mindstorms NXT, and I actually have that, so I could do those. But from what I can tell, there's no instruction manual for those. Oh yeah, it says building instructions at a specific website. I don't even know if that website's still up, if it's 14 years old. Yeah, let's just put these to the side and let's look at the actual pieces. So probably the most normal thing in here is just a power functions extension cable. How is this so hard to open? And just so you know, all of this stuff is from the Power Functions Lego line, which is the motorized line from like before 2018. And yeah, this extension cable is literally just an extension cable. It's the extra long one though. I can't even fit it in frame. And it just extends it. Simple. Cool part about these is that they have a nine volt connector on the bottom, so they can attach to Lego nine volt trains. So this is the powered system before Lego power functions. And these studs right here actually have metal contacts on the side and that's Lego nine volt. So it can actually transfer the newer power functions to Lego nine volt, which is super cool. And it's still compatible with Lego power functions on the top. We got some just regular Lego power functions lights. Boom, they glow, isn't that crazy? But this will be good for testing these later. So I'm glad it comes with it. Now, before we get to the super cool things, let's just open these. These are one of the main reasons I got this set. The reason I wanted these so much is because they're like the best Lego propeller for like actually getting lift. Like they're super good and they're super expensive. These are like $9 a piece on Bricklink for the cheapest seller in America. It's like insane. So getting this set for $100 that comes with all this cool stuff, so worth it. And I'll actually be using these again in another upcoming video. All right, next up we got the little power thing. So this is weird. It comes in like bubble wrap straight from the factory. Oh, wow. So this is really interesting because this is a Lego NXT brick, the Mindstorm set it was compatible with, and it looks like it uses the exact same screen, which is funny. And on the top, it actually has a Mindstorms port and the power functions port is underneath. <laughs> That's interesting. So this actually has another part, which is this. And this piece just slides on here. So what this does is it takes the electricity from what these give and convert it into energy and store it in this battery. So what are these exactly? Well, you might be able to tell what the bigger one is, <laughs> but the smaller one is a very interesting looking Lego motor. So for comparison, here's a Lego M motor and this motor, the new one is actually called an E motor. And unlike this one where it just spins, this one gets spun and as it's being spun, it'll generate electricity and store it in this, which is super cool. So this in the set is used like a windmill. You can see it in this picture. It uses it to generate electricity. And if you think about renewable energy, what comes to mind? Yep, this is a Lego solar panel. And this is how I originally found this set. You wouldn't think that Lego would make a solar panel, but it's so cool. So literally this is just a solar panel with Lego connections on the side and a power functions connector on the bottom. So yeah, just like the motor, this would also generate electricity and put it in this bad boy. Okay, I need an explanation on how to do this. How to get started. 
Install the energy storage. Wow, that's a really creative name for a battery. Disconnect after use. I recommend that you charge and discharge the energy meter three times upon initial use. The energy meter to either the Lego Power Function battery box supplied to 16 batteries. So it's saying to charge this fully, just regularly without the renewable energy. You can just attach it to a Lego Power Functions battery box. But what I'm wondering is if I need a charge to even start using these renewable energy things. Like, I shouldn't, right? All right. Well, the only thing I can see to do, let's try doing something. So let's just attach this e-motor to the main hub. I don't know what this thing's called. Energy meter. So this thing, when you crank it, it'll make more electricity. So I got a Lego lever here. So you put that on there and crank it. There's no way I'm doing this for forever. How long is it gonna take to charge it? Wait, yo, yo. Do I plug it in that top one or the bottom one? Looks like we plug it in the top. Now let's crank it. Bro. All right, this is taking too long. So what I see in the instructions is that they have a little crank system, sort of like mine, except they're using gear ratios to spin it way faster. So let's make a contraption real quick. All right, so we can put a three long axle in there instead and then put black pins on the side of it and then attach a Technic brick to the side of that. And then we can put a big gear on the motor. And then on this side of the gear, we can put in four long axle through and put the small gear. Oh shoot, <laughs> bro, I just realized I'm doing this completely backwards. So what I accidentally did there is made a small gear trying to crank a big gear, which makes it go really slow, but that gives a ton of strength. But what I want right now is speed, not strength. So we're putting the small gear on the motor and a big gear to the side. Slide it on and then we can get some one by threes and just put them on the ends. So now if I attach on the crank, then this makes it so I'm basically going 48 to eight. Bro, why can't I do that? That's six. So this basically makes it so one rotation with this is six rotations for the motor. So this is basically helping me a lot. Hopefully I'm doing this right. Do you think it's on the top or is it on the bottom? Like I actually don't know. It's on the bottom. Shoot bro, it's on the bottom. I think, I don't know. What picture was I looking at before? Hopefully we get the screen to turn on. Oh, oh. Something's happening, something's happening. Yes, yes, yes. So the motor is definitely harder to turn, which is interesting. So what it looks like, it's gonna turn off here in a second. So as I crank it, you can see a, a little menu pops up. So yeah, I think that tops volts, amps, and watts. And it tells you all that information in the bottom. My guess is that the bottom is what it's putting out. Okay, it's staying on, so I must've gotten it a minute. Shoot, it turned off. All right, I have an idea. It's, I'm actually really intrigued to see this. So if we attach a regular motor on the top, my bin is going to be my holder for it. If I crank this, then turn this on. Turn this up. Is that what we want? Maybe not. See, I'm just doing this as I go. Wait, how does this come out of here? Shoot, how do they come out? How do I get it out? There we go. So what if we just bypass this completely and connect the two motors? This might work. That is, yo, yo, that's actually sick. That's so cool. Oh my, it's going crazy. This is so amazing to me, I'm mesmerizing. I'm still wondering how this gets power from here though. Maybe I didn't have it charged enough, I don't know. So I'm thinking what I wanna try next is make a windmill with these to generate some electricity without me having to crank it. And while we wait with that, I'm gonna just set up the solar panel and see what it can do with indoor light. I'm not even sure if it'll charge it at all, but I know there's some sort of power in indoor light. So we'll just keep that out in the open and see if anything happens. All right, so I'm kind of basing it off the instructions that they give me, like the design to hold the six propellers, because uh, it's hard to hold six propellers without a specific piece, which I don't think LEGO makes a specific piece. So what they do is they get two of these half plates and put them together, of course, so it makes one brick, and then they just put pins through it. And then on those pins, just these bricks go. Now we put those in there, and on the other side, we stagger them to do it opposite. There we go. So now, if you look on it from straight on, there's six propeller places, and we have six propellers. So now we put two pins on every single one of these. Now we put the propellers so that the dotted part is inward. So you can see that side's dotted, and then the other side does not have anything. So the dotted side is the side that will like generate the lift or whatever. So you need that side to face out. There we go. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so we can get this peg that has a stopper on the end, put that through this. So then on the e-motor, we put this little five long axle in there. Then we get this little connector piece and just put that in there at the same time as putting it back on. And then this side of the windmill will just slide right on there. No problem. That's the base is done. So now we just need a little stand thing for it. So let's make that. All right, well the solar panel hasn't done anything indoors, so we'll have to go outside for that one. But now I gotta attach this to the windmill thing. These things I've prepared can attach right there. Then we attach the other side. And that actually makes it way sturdier. Now to get this cable out of the way down here, we can just put a couple pins in the side of the meter and the connector just sits right on there. Now we got our whole windmill set up and I gotta find a way to make this thing blow in the wind. Cause <laughs> there's no wind outside. Up here we got like the AC running. If I hold that an angle, it gives out a little bit. It's so slow though. It's going. Oh, I'm surprised it's actually working. It's too slow. I need something faster cause that's not gonna generate enough electricity. All right, well I'm in the garage. There's not much light in here, sorry, but I got a really old fan, it's super dusty. We'll just set it to the fastest it can go. Put our thing in front and see what happens, I guess. Okay, yes, yes. That's what we want, yes. The screen gonna turn on though, that's the question. This is definitely not renewable at the moment, but that's cause it's not windy outside. Oh, if we get closer, it goes faster. Okay, okay. Bro, what is up? I've had this going for like solid like two minutes. I'm not doing anything. Okay, I'm gonna see if it's something to do with the extension cable maybe. Remove the extension cable from here too. Yeah, maybe I didn't push it in all the way. I don't know, maybe I didn't do it till I click. We'll have to see, I guess. Let's see if it turns on now. Oh, it turned on. That's actually crazy, what? Okay, I think the extension cable was not plugged in fully because now it's working just fine on the extension cable, which is actually good news because then I can put it back together. <laughs> By the way, I'm doing this on the hood of our truck. I'm going crazy right now. Okay, now we can for real do this. Turn on, bad boy, yes sir. Okay, so how many watts are we generating? We're going, I can barely even read it. It's so dark in here. All right, after some newly found light, I can actually read it. 2.5 volts kind of seems like the max. It's not going any higher than that. 2.2 volts right now, like it's not that much. So I mean, I guess it like works, but like this barely generates any electricity compared to me just cranking it. Like cranking it, I was getting like over five volts. So yeah, I mean, efficient, I'm not really sure, but I mean, it does generate electricity, so that's really cool. But now let's actually try the solar panel outside. I wonder if the solar panel will do any better. All right, so for the solar panel, I want like a design where it can hinge so I can aim it directly at the sun, wherever that may be. So we need a hinge thing that is right in the center and there's no pins in the center at the moment. So, oh my gosh, I just launched that gear. So what I can do is put Technic pins in those connection points on the ends and then put Technic beams on those. So then there's a direct center one right here and then it can hinge off that. Then I just do the same thing for the other side. Now I'm just gonna build up a little stand thing for the sides of it. All right, got both of the legs finished. So now the solar panels can just sit right on those and then get it on the other side too. And there we go. It actually barely fits through that little, through these. So that's actually perfect. <laughs> and then it's adjustable so we can put out whatever angle it needs to be. Now let's go take it outside and see how it performs. All right, so I'm outside in our driveway. Most of it's in the shade though, except a little bit in the sun. But just being out here, not even in the direct sun, it's already getting a charge. So that's kind of crazy. Anyway, how much is it in the shade? It's flashing between 4.5 and 2.4 volts. That's pretty good. All right, so let's put this right here. That's a lot of sun. Let's see how much we get. And we are getting, oh man, it's making a squeaky noise. It looks like, yeah, it's getting a lot. It's like more than me cranking it. It's flashing between 4.8-ish and six. So it's actually getting good charge from it. I just don't like the fact that we're putting Lego in the sun, like direct sun like this, because Lego is known to yellow in the sun. So this is basically just yellowing pieces. It's kind of funny but we gotta test it for the solar. This is so cool. This is all official Lego and we're literally generating power right now. Nuna. That was kind of awkward. I don't know what that guy's doing, but he's in a van and uh, he drove by literally staring at me out here with a camera on Lego something. <laughs> it's funny. 
Yeah, I don't know how to tell how much charge is actually in this. So I'm just gonna go inside and see what we can power with this and see how much charge we actually got from the sun right there. All right, so we put some lights on here and then turn it on. Let's see if it still has a charge. And no, there is no charge left. It has been a couple minutes since I did go outside though. So maybe it drained already, but the solar panel at least provides power like really well, better than me cranking and better than the windmill thing. But what I wanna do now that I think would be really cool is make a Lego RC car that's completely solar powered. So let's do it. All right, so I got these attached, the solar panels above it, so that the solar panel can get all the sun, of course. Now we just need some wheels and stuff. All right guys, I think I got the car done. So up here I have an M motor that will spin and as it spins, this will turn. It's not a servo motor. A servo motor would be the best for this, but I don't have a servo motor. Um, and then in the back I got an L motor, which is a strong motor for just driving. And then I also have it geared up to super fast gear. So it should go hopefully somewhat fast. That is if the solar panel can generate that much electricity and I can use a controller to control it. So yeah, let's go outside and test this. So I realized that it got way windier out here. So I brought my propeller thing out here even though it's not attached to a motor at the moment. Oh my, it's about to blow over. Yeah, let's uh, put that down. We're trying this bad boy out. So I'm hoping this will work. No guarantees though. Okay, so far, nothing. It turned on for a second, did you see that? So it looks like it might be needing like, it needs to charge. So what I'm gonna do, since I told you earlier that I brought this bad boy out, we're just gonna attach this to the car. Just have it charge it too. We're gonna both charge it. All right guys, well, the car isn't working. It won't work even with the power from that. What if we just avoid the thing altogether and just plug the solar panel directly into the motor? It's moving, yes. Okay, let's see if it moves. I will be very surprised if it does. Yo, it's moving, it moved for a second. We're gonna swap these gears so that it's a small gear spinning the big gear so that we can have strength to get the car at least moving. Yes, it's moving guys, yes, I did it. It's kind of struggles though, but this is completely powered by solar right now. It's going like so slow. It works though, it's amazing, let's go. It's driving backwards too, not sure how I fixed that. So it's not like speedy or anything, like I can easily attach a battery to this and have it go super fast. But the cool part is that it's running completely from the sun. All right, let's go back inside. I do want to find out how this would have driven though, so I've plugged the battery pack straight into the receiver, so we're not doing anything renewable right now. There we go, let's put it on the floor and see what we can do. So I do not have the right controller for this. There's a better one for the cars, but whatever. So this is with the slow and then my steering, does it work? Yes, it does. So it would have worked, that's nice to know. Well, this gear is too hard for this motor to handle apparently. I'll just make this a one-to-one -one ratio so it'll go the same speed that the motor puts out and it should actually drive. All right, let's try it. Hey, we zoom in. Shoot. All right, well, at least I know it works. It's not with renewable energy, basically. It works with batteries. <laughs> well, guys, that's the set, and I think it's really cool how it does the renewable energy type stuff. Maybe I just have to wait forever in the sun or against wind for it to charge it up or something. I didn't even try out Mindstorms with it, so if you guys want me to make a part two, then let me know. I can do some Mindstorms, hopefully. This software is like 14 years old, though, so it might be a little bit of a struggle, but I bet we can get it to work. <laughs> if you want to check out another video similar to this, I'll have a link up here in the corner and down the description but as always make sure to like subscribe and hit the notifications bell kill this table is a mess ah, i gotta go pick it up usually lego motors are powered by batteries yo oh there we go for comparison here's the lego m motor the just default no, the default oh, fortnite talk so now, oh shoot, I'm just pulling my box off there. Let's make a Lego RC car that is completely... <laughs>